So what is going on guys, Nandopin93 here with another video and if you guys saw my first episode of my Microsoft series on the M1, you guys saw we went over the installation process of the entire Microsoft suite and now I want to create episodes on individual applications, kind of going through them and see how they were optimized for the M1 Mac, how well they work and if there's anything different in comparison to maybe the iPad version, the online version and then even the Windows version, right? So today we're going to go over Microsoft Outlook because they totally redesigned it and it actually looks really, really nice. So shout out to Microsoft for uh, you know, swallowing their pride and kind of giving us Mac users exactly what we've been yearning for from a Microsoft perspective, but let's get into it. So let's get started with this video, everybody. So I left the Outlook version as the old version just to kind of show you guys, A, how quickly it opens. So this is the M1 compatible Outlook application. You can see that it opened up perfectly, right? And the one I want to show you guys is just how to quickly toggle to the new version. So up here on the toolbar, you'll see that there's a new Outlook toggle. It asks you to switch to the new Outlook. It's going to restart the application. As you can see, all I did was press enter. And then all of a sudden, this new UI gets shown to us. And this is the new Outlook for Mac OS Big Sur, everybody. And you can see that it's totally different. If you guys want to see real quick, let's go back to the other one, switch back. You can see just how different the UI has changed. Like this is the old version. It's very similar to what you see on the Windows side and it's all squared off. You know, it's familiar because a lot of people have used Outlook like this for years, including myself. But if we want to, like I said, get with the times, get ourselves into 2021, get ourselves as compatible as possible with the N1 Mac, then this is gonna, the way that we're going to have to adopt things, right? But just a caveat, just because you're on the old version of Outlook does not mean that it's not compatible for the M1. So both of them are M1 ready. So if you really like the old version, just because you're on the old version doesn't mean it's gonna work any less or work any worse. But I just like the new one and I figure if Microsoft is going this route, then might as well adopt it as soon as we can, guys. But as you guys can see, it is a little bit different than what we're used to, especially visually. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger just so you guys can see the entire thing right here. So I'm not gonna full screen it, but this is pretty much at full screen, right? And this is the new look. So you still have your, your sidebar on the left. And again, it's trying to adopt Mac OS Big Sur UI language, right? And with Mac OS Big Sur, Apple made a effort to move everything over to the side toolbar to make it more, I think like iPad OS and iOS, right? Cause it wants everything to kind of merge together and be one seamless ecosystem and operating system. And that's where I think Apple's going eventually. But you can see here that this is the normal screen. So from a function standpoint, it's exactly the same. From a content standpoint, it's the same for me. I'm just gonna hide this to give ourselves a little bit more room here. But you can see that this is our inbox. This is how the new emails populate. And then to the right is the today view or the my day view, which is what Microsoft is calling it. And it's basically your calendar and your upcoming events just at a glance, right? So you can still, as you can see over here, go to the actual calendar portion and you get to see a holistic view of your calendar by a week basis, gives you the temperature, lets you change exactly how you wanna see it, right? So if I wanna get a month view, that's my month view. If I wanna do a three day view, that's there as well. But what Microsoft wanted to do was just make everything a lot simpler for us, right? So everything is right here at a glance. I can click on one, you can see that the message is right here. And then again, like I said, to the right, you get this My Day view, which gives you all the upcoming events that you have happening, right? And if I wanna customize that even further, I can only show what's happening today but I like to get a, a nice two week outlook. The next big thing that changed with Microsoft is if you guys can see on the top of the toolbar is a giant, and I mean a giant search bar, right? So Microsoft totally changed the search engine to be a lot more accurate when it's A, searching through your actual emails, whether it's a sent one, a received one, or emails from different inboxes, all of it can be searched through here, but then it also default searches to anything online. So if you're looking for, if you need something, then it's there. But if I wanna find something from myself, as you guys can see, it quickly searches it, shows me everything that's been there, and it's good to go. So they put a big focus on the search feature this year because they really want to make sure that people are finding their emails as they should be, right? And like you see here, you can even maximize the search by going into the current folder, a subfolder, or the entire mailbox. The next thing I want to show you guys is just the different modes that they have in terms of visual modes between light and dark. So I obviously am a big dark mode fan, but if you guys just want to change it up, go into the preferences, turn off dark mode right here, and you can see that it's a totally different look, right? It's a lot brighter, it's a lot more in your face. So a lot of people like that, especially in the mornings to wake them up, but I like to keep mine in dark mode and you can see that it changes in real time. You don't need to reset anything or quit out of the application. And then another huge thing, in my opinion, that Microsoft is doing is the ability to customize your toolbar 
in its entirety. So this is the default toolbar that I'm given, right? So you have the option to delete messages, archive them, move them to a different folder, flag them, mark is unread, and then sync. But if you press on the three dots right here, A gives you other third-party toolbar applications. So these are some of the things that I use, even some first-party ones like OneNote. But if you go to customize toolbar down here, this is amazing. So this is kind of where Microsoft is beginning to adopt the Apple UI, the Mac OS UI, the iPad OS UI, where a lot of it's just drag and drop customization, right? So for instance, here's the delete button and all you have to do is drag items into your toolbar to customize, right? So these are the ones that are up there right now, but if I wanna hit a reply one right here, I can throw it there. If I want a quick print button, throw that right there. If I wanna do a redo, throw that there. And then all I have to do is press done. And as you can see, my toolbar is populating exactly how I want it to populate. And there's a lot more room for more. So that's the beauty of it. And you can continue to customize it as you see fit. And on top of that, you can get add-ins. So you're not just limited to what Microsoft gives you. And then if you get lost, if you do too many, all you have to do is reset the toolbar, press done. And then those are the ones that I was defaulted with in the beginning. And then if you keep moving across the toolbar, you can press this to get rid of the today view. I kind of like it there because again, it gives me more information at a glance. And I'm a big, big fan of that. But that is the inbox and the mailing service in a nutshell. The biggest things that you have to look at are the new UI, just to make it a little more pleasing for us to look at, the new search functionality, and then all the customizations that are being allowed to be used. And then also, if you guys see, there's a couple of other icons down here that we are not used to. So the first one is this contacts pane. So for me, it's empty right now, and I don't know where it sources its contacts from, but I believe I have to sync it to my actual work server in order to get the contacts pulled in here. But the beauty of it is that you can actually start a Teams call directly from here, start a Teams chat, start a Teams meeting. You can even set meetings directly through here. So it's a beautiful thing, and again, Outlook is trying to be your one-stop shop for all of your productivity suite applications, right? So if you need to get started on something, they want you to start it on Outlook because, because that is where you're collaborating with other people the most. So that is a cool thing that they added in here. Again, a contacts pane. And then these last two right here, so this is Microsoft To Do, which defaults you directly to the web portal version. And the reason it does that is because of the fact that it's just not there yet. So if you see right here, this is the OneNote button. So if I click on this, it lets us know like, hey, Microsoft Notes, take notes on the web while we're working on Notes module in the new Outlook for Mac. So basically it's telling us at some point we will be able to kind of go in here and start a OneNote file or OneNote page directly from Outlook. And I think the same thing applies to the to-do list. They're just not there yet, so it defaults you to the web version of it, right? So that is Microsoft Outlook in a nutshell. And if you guys have seen my previous videos, you know that this is much different than what we're used to. This takes a lot of design language from the iPadOS application, which I've shown you guys multiple times. Again, a lot more bubbly, a lot more rounded off. The colors are popping. It's easier to navigate. It looks like it's made for a touch interface, as you guys can see, and that's what Big Sur is. It's taking macOS and making it look essentially like an iPad, which I have over here. But that is pretty much everything you need to know about it. I do wanna see if we can add more windows. I did kind of want to see how responsive everything was, so I'm going to just open up a couple of new messages. So one more thing that I actually wanted to do was actually send a message, right? So one thing that they did do, and if you guys are, again, used to the older version of Outlook, whenever you start a new message, it pops open a brand new window, right? In this case, it's all integrated within. So first off, if you hover over the new message button, without clicking anything, then you get these new options, right? So you can start a new message, a new event, new contact, new to-do, and a new note directly from here. And again, I'm not pressing any buttons, I'm just hovering over the actual thing. And then when I press on the new message, instead of getting a brand new window, it starts the message directly on here, right? So if I wanna go through all my, my typing, hello, thanks for watching, amazing, right? And then right here, I'm gonna show you guys all the different options, right? So if you wanna change it just to see what it would look like with somebody receiving it on a white plane, this is what it looks like. You can change it back because that's what you're defaulted at. This is gonna be the button to pop it out. So if I pop this out, it's very, very quick and that's what's amazing. So that's what I wanna see. So let's minimize this a little bit and I'm gonna just start opening a bunch of messages and see kinda how quickly it goes. So there's one, here's another and you can see that it's happening like instantaneously. Boom, another new message, boom, and then I open them up and they're all right here. It's just crazy how quick everything is happening. Normally on the Intel based one, especially on the Mac side, even on the Windows side, everything takes forever to open up. Everything takes a while to get set up. It's kind of like it's pulling information from who knows where in order for it to actually start working. So I love how quick and how responsive the M1 and optimized version of Outlook is. 
So that is how you actually create a message. And like I said, it starts off within the actual system. And then if you want, you can pop it out. And then what I did want to see was to make sure that we had our options right here. Cause obviously I like to send read receipts, delivery receipts, and it looks like the actual pop out window is very similar to the one we saw with the old outlook. So those are your options right there. This pop out window looks identical to the one from the old outlook. So there's no difference between the pop out window on the old outlook and the new outlook, just giving you guys a little heads up there. But other than that, Outlook has been great so far. I've been loving it, no hiccups. It's been integrated perfectly well with the M1 MacBook. All my plugins are working as they should be. So overall, really happy. Also, leave a comment below. Do you guys like it when I do my videos of a screen recording like this, so it's an actual recording of the screen? Or do you want me to screen record it and overlay it somewhere else? Leave a comment below. I'm just curious of your thoughts, guys. But let's go back to the normal view. And that's pretty much gonna do for this video, guys. Like you guys saw, a lot of it has to do with UI differences. It's just a lot more rounded out, a lot more bubbly a lot more Big Sur and Mac OS ready. You know, it just becomes more of an extension of the operating system. It doesn't look out of place anymore, right? You guys saw that you can toggle between the old version of Outlook and the new version of Outlook. And I think the reason they did that is so if people have a learning curve or if maybe they're used to the old version like I am, uh, they can kind of take their time moving over to the new one. I'm sure that eventually they'll wean out all the people that are using the older one and kind of make everybody go to the new one. But overall, I've been really enjoying the new version of Outlook. It's a lot more pleasant to use, a lot easier to use, kind of everything at a glance. And it also integrates like you guys saw with Microsoft To Do and then also Microsoft OneNote. You guys saw that they're still kind of working on that compatibility, but overall, Microsoft Outlook as an email client, even if it is for corporate or personal use, or even if it's a Gmail account on the Microsoft Outlook application, it works really well and I'm very impressed, guys. So Microsoft Outlook for the M1 does get my recommendation. If you guys have an M1 Mac, I recommend downloading it if you don't have a native mail client yet or if you guys are looking for one because it's really, really intuitive, really nice to use. And you can see that they're making strides little by little to make it more of a Mac user experience and removing it from the Windows experience, which I really like. I wanted Microsoft apps to be created for the Mac as opposed to Microsoft applications that were kind of quickly turned down or quickly turned around into a Mac OS application, but in reality, it was still a Microsoft app. Right? But that's gonna do it for this video. Comment below which Microsoft application you guys wanna see next or just any other applications in general because I wanna to continue to do this series. We're gonna go over all the main applications on Microsoft, guys, but that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, peace.